It's Sunday, July 4th, 2021, and this is Markets Daily from Coindesk. I'm Adam B. Levine here again with your weekend story. On today's Sunday show, we're taking a look at one of crypto's biggest mysteries. Today's episode is sponsored by Kava and Nexo.io. And just a reminder, Coindesk is a news source and does not provide investment advice. Today's featured story comes to us courtesy of David Z. Morris, who is Coindesk's chief insights columnist. When a pair of brothers disappeared last week along with 69,000 bitcoins belonging to customers of their AfroCrypt exchange, they were continuing a time-honored crypto tradition. Since bitcoin first appeared, there have been dozens and perhaps hundreds of exit scams in which the head of exchanges or token projects suddenly disappeared with user or investor funds. One of the most notorious apparent exit scams was the collapse of Canadian exchange Quadriga CX. In early 2019, the exchange disclosed, months after the fact, that founder Gerald Cotton had died of complications from Crohn's disease while on a trip to India. His sudden death, according to the exchange, had cut off access to the cold wallets, holding $145 million in customer tokens. Withdrawals were frozen, and the firm eventually entered bankruptcy. Angry customers and inquisitive journalists naturally did not take the claim of Cotton's death at face value. Instead, they started digging and quickly realized that Gerald Cotton had never been quite the upstanding citizen his clean-cut image suggested. Speculation quickly spread that Cotton had faked his death and emptied out the Quadriga piggy bank. Exit Scam is a new podcast that pulls together all the strains of the complex Quadriga story into a compelling eight-part yarn. The show is produced and hosted by Aaron Lammer, also host of the Long Form Podcast, and it offers some truly surprising insights into the case's core question. Did Gerald Cotton really die in India from complications of Crohn's disease? Or did he steal customer funds with plans to disappear forever? The surprising answer that seems increasingly plausible after listening to Exit Scam is both. Quote, I think it's been pretty well proven that Cotton was criminal in the way he operated his exchange, says Lammer. And he strategically extracted crypto from that exchange over time with the intent to defraud his users. End quote. According to postmortem findings by auditor Ernst & Young, Cotton used fake accounts on his own exchange to buy customers Bitcoin using Canadian dollars that didn't exist, and then moved those stolen tokens to take risky bets on other exchanges. Cotton had also taken flying lessons and made other preparations that would have been useful for a life on the lam. His will was signed just two weeks before the ill-fated India trip and included 100,000 Canadian, that's $81,000 US, left to his two dogs. Most shocking of all, the mild-mannered Canadian had a track record of deception and theft going back to his teenage years. And yet, according to every piece of evidence Lammer could dig up, Gerald Cotton really did die unexpectedly in India. Exit Scam includes interviews with journalists who retraced Cotton's death and found no credible evidence of forgery, body doubles, or other foul play. Canadian law enforcement agencies seem satisfied and have refused to exhume Cotton's body for DNA testing. What happened to Cotton's wife, Jennifer Robertson, strikes me as the clearest evidence that his death was truly accidental. Robertson accompanied him to the hospital where he died and so would have had to have been a knowing collaborator if his death was faked. But if she was a collaborator, she didn't get much for her trouble. Robertson appears to have walked away with next to none of the remaining ill-gotten quadriga money that, for a time, fueled the couple's luxurious, globe-trotting lifestyle. Even Cotton's dogs wound up empty-pawed. Even if it doesn't solve the Quadriga mystery, Exit Scam is worth your while for its insights into an even stranger question. What made Gerald Cotton a lifelong and passionate thief? Kava gives you the ability to earn more by connecting the world's largest cryptocurrencies, ecosystems, and financial applications on DeFi's most trusted, scalable, and secure earning platform. Kava is an institutional-grade cross-chain engine built to scale on the largest decentralized proof-of-stake network. Mint stablecoins, lend, borrow, earn, and swap safely across the world's biggest crypto assets with Kava. To learn more, visit kava.io slash marketsdaily. Looking to make the most of your crypto assets? Nexo.io's got you covered. Grow your wealth securely with Nexo's high-yield interest accounts. Buy crypto on your terms directly within Nexo's platform and start earning daily compounding interest right away. Get the cash you need without selling your crypto from just 6.9% APR. Instantly swap between 100 crypto and traditional currency pairs. And don't worry, Nexo is insured against losses up to $375 million. Get the most of your crypto at Nexo.io. That's N-E-X-O dot I-O. 
Cotton's history of malfeasance, uncovered in part by investigator Amy Castor, began when he was just 15 years old. That was when he entered the shady world of online high-yield investment programs, better known as HYIPs or Ponzi schemes. It was through that world that he became familiar with digital currencies. Well before Bitcoin even existed, Cotton was working with future Quadriga CX co-founder Michael Patron to help HYIP operators and others redeem or move their e-gold, gold-backed digital token later shut down by the FBI for its role in money laundering. The postmortem discovery of Cotton's long history of illicit involvements was shocking in part because the soft-spoken Canadian appeared to be trustworthy and mild-mannered to many. Exit Scam features interviews with longtime crypto veterans who worked closely with Cotton and found him entirely credible. Moreover, Cotton would have had plenty of money thanks to his genuinely visionary early stake in crypto. He was a pre-sale Ethereum buyer, Lambert points out. If he'd never gotten involved in the exchange, he would have been rich. Some of the blame for Cotton's dark path may lie with that co-founder. A fellow Canadian whose role at Quadriga CX had been occasionally nebulous was one of the first threads investigators pulled after Cotton's death. It was quickly discovered that Patron's real name was Omar Dahani. He had it changed after being convicted of identity fraud and spending time in federal prison in the U.S. Patron was an older, seasoned operator when he met Cotton on the HYIP message board, and they quickly became collaborators. But Lammer thinks Cotton's own thrill-seeking was just as much a factor as any bad influence. Quote, My read was that, on some level, Jerry was addicted to scamming, the host says. Addicted to stealing other people's money. This was more of a gambler's high than a rich guy's high. As he pursued more and more of other people's money, the stakes went up. End quote. All that helps explain the seemingly implausible coincidence that Cotton died at the exact point when he stood to benefit most from disappearing. Cotton, A, had a serious medical condition, and B, had been in the middle of one illicit financial operation or another for years. He could have died at nearly any moment since 2010 and been plausibly suspected of faking it to disappear with somebody's money. Gerald's final thrill may have come from his misuse of customer funds in the months leading up to his death. Cotton created a Quadriga customer account under the false name Chris Markey and funded it with fictitious Canadian dollars. He used those fake dollars to buy customers' cryptocurrency and then move them to other exchanges. Quote, he was putting money on other exchanges and doing very risky degen stuff with it, says Lammer. Most importantly, Cotton wound up very long ETH. That turned out to be a very bad bet. ETH crashed by more than 90% over the course of 2018 and stayed in the basement until late 2020. According to an investigation by the Ontario Security Commission, Cotton's huge speculative losses on bets made with stolen customer funds made up the bulk of roughly $93 million U.S. equivalent missing from Quadriga CX's balance sheet in the final accounting. Gerald Cotton's gambling before his death, rather than a fake death enabling an exit scam, seems to be why Quadriga's cold wallets are empty. That amount was more money than Quadriga made over the entire time it was in business, Lammer says. That's not just a loss, you can't recover, end quote. This is how a story usually ends for habitual gamblers of any stripe, whether you're pushing regulatory boundaries, hoping no one comes after you when a pyramid scheme collapse, or just day trading shit coins. The thrill of winning can make bigger risks seem appealing. But of course, everyone loses eventually. And by the time Cotton started losing, his bets were more than big enough to wipe out a lifetime of gains. Though the extent of his personal crypto holdings remained largely opaque, there simply wasn't much left to take from Quadriga by late 2018. So while it doesn't definitively answer the mystery of Gerald Cotton, Exit Scam still rewrites the story we thought we knew. Quote, We thought we were looking for basically a rich guy who had stolen money, says Lammer. Now, either Cotton is dead, or if he's alive, he's a gambling addict who's broke. End quote. And thanks for listening. We'll be back with a special holiday episode tomorrow, Digging Into China. And just a reminder that Coindesk is a news source and does not provide investment advice. 